as of the end of 2023, I have ridden 1,294 different roller coasters, 1,125 made of steel, 169 made of wood. In 2023, I rode 64 new roller coasters, and 8 of those cracked my top 100. Other coasters moved up as I got re-rides on them, while others moved down. This video will rank my favorite 100 roller coasters in the world that I have personally ridden. This is why you will not see rides from places like China or South Korea, as I have not been there. This list will combine both wood and steel coasters into one list. I place rides assuming I'm in my favorite seat. I tend to prioritize rides with great airtime, strong pacing, and beautiful settings. This list is all my personal opinion, and I don't expect anyone to have the same list as me. When comparing two rides, it comes down to which one I have more fun on. If you want more in-depth thoughts on many of these rides, I already have separate reviews published for most of them on this channel. Also, to avoid being redundant, assume the rides on this list are smooth unless otherwise noted. Starting off the list at number 100 is Flying Aces of Ferrari World. This intimate hypercoaster is the sister coaster to Skyrush. This one also starts with a speedy cable lift hill and a first drop with intense ejector airtime. Then the wing seats offer crazy laterals and the directional changes. This layout is not as airtime heavy as the hypers higher on this list, but it does have a wonderful hang time filled inversion at the end. Number 99, Wild Train of Fantasiana. This Pax creation looks like a family coaster, but it has some intense ejector airtime, rivaling that of an RMC. The hills are comically sharp, so they all violently launch you airborne and this is paired with some terrifying head choppers. The ride is not as fast as the other rides on this list, and it is short, but it sure is wild. If you want to ride it, 2024 is your last opportunity, as it will be removed after this season. Number 98, Rorosaurus at Storyland. Gravity Group has made a lot of small wood coasters packed with airtime, but this is the feistiest and best of the bunch. This coaster is nearly a dozen airtime moments, all of which are abrupt ejector pops. I particularly love the return run which has four powerful bunny hills in a row. It feels like a finale straight from an RMC. Number 97, Pirat Najur's Summerland. This intimate megalite has the power of a hypercoaster, just on a much smaller scale. The first two hills only have moderate floater airtime, but once this ride warms up, the remaining hills all have strong ejector airtime. Those S hills in the middle are particularly violent. Then this rides some low turns with good force for variety. Number 96, Alpina Blitz at Nigla Land. This is Mach's take on the Megalite. This is another airtime centric ride, and the overall experience felt similar with one key change. Alpina Blitz is a far superior first drop. That plunge offers some wild ejector airtime in the back row. Number 95, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind at Epcot. This combines great theming with a dynamic experience. You have multiple pre-shows establishing a story, and the ride takes place in a giant show building with a starfield effect, giant screens, some physical props, and onboard audio. Then this Vacoma coaster features a series of airtime-filled dips and fairly forceful turns, and this is an extremely long ride as well. Number 94, Wild Mouse XXL on the German Fair Circuit. This is a Wild Mouse coaster on steroids. Mach took their standard Wild Mouse coaster, but appended to sizable drops at the start. This causes you to take the remaining layout with way more speed than usual. And since this ride runs with no braking, the laterals are among the strongest of any coaster. And the dips in the second half offer legit ejector airtime. And as a bonus, this ride is a funhouse style queue. Number 93, Balder at Lisa Berry. This intimate prefab woody is all about ejector airtime. Every single hill offers strong negative Gs. The larger hills sustain it longer, but you still get catapulted out of your seat in the smaller hills. The ride is repetitive, almost to a fault, as it consists of one or two airtime hills, followed by a turn. This wouldn't be bad except the turnarounds are very tame, which disrupts the pacing relative to the coasters higher on this list. 
but the airtime is amazing, and this ride is extremely smooth thanks to the recent track work. Number 92, Rampage at Alabama Splash Adventure. This CCI wood coaster is wild and fast paced. The turns are barely banked, so they all deliver crushing laterals. Then the ride has plenty of airtime as well. I particularly like the ride's largest drops in the back row. They deliver sharp jolts of ejector airtime, particularly the imposing first drop. This ride had some bumpy valleys in 2023, but it was plenty bearable for me. That being said, the ride is closed for the 2024 season as the park adds steel track to reduce maintenance costs going forwards. Number 91, Steel Type in a Dream World. This specifically applies to the spinning back car. This is a near clone of Europa Park's Blue Fire, but it was fitted with a spinning seat. The spin rate is rather slow, but it was exciting taking these elements sideways and backwards. This mock launch coaster has several spots of airtime and four great inversions, most notably the final barrel roll. It feels like a pseudo Mosasaurus roll and it's downright insane if you're spinning through it. Number 90, Jersey Devil Coaster at Six Flags Great Adventure. This RMC Raptor is a fantastic first half. The first drop is incredible ejector airtime in the back row. Then there are some additional moments of strong ejector airtime and three wonderful inversions, with the stall and zero G roll having spectacular hang time. The second half is tamer, but it still offers nice floater airtime on a few hills and close head choppers. Number 89, New Texas Giant at Six Flags Over Texas. The original RMC has size and length on its side. The first half has some great instances of ejector airtime. Then the overbanks offer nice whip. The airtime is still plentiful in the second half, but it's not quite as intense as the later RMC hybrids. But this ride does have the far superior, more comfortable Gerslauer trains. Number 88, Monster at Adventureland. This Gerslauer Infinity Coaster is a bevy of ways to get you out of your seat. The Beyond Vertical Drop is epic ejector airtime, and some of the other hills also offer negative Gs. Then there are some sharp laterals to try to bend you out of the train. Then there are some super slow inversions that will have you dangling against the lap bar. Number 87, Cannibal at Lagoon. This rise a marvel, especially because it was designed in-house by the park. The first drop is one of the best in the world. It is a beyond vertical drop of hyper heights. The airtime is phenomenal. The four inversions are great too. The Immelman has good positives. The dive loop has a shocking pop of ejector airtime going into it. And the lagoon roll is one of the world's best hang time moments. Number 86, Renegade at Valley Fair. This GCI wood coaster has an excellent layout. The first half has some speed hills with sustained floater airtime. The remaining turnarounds and hills all offer briefer but stronger jolts of airtime. The retractable seatbelts do restrict your airtime a bit, and the ride has a shimmy, but this ride is fun and fast paced, especially at night because there's very little light during the first half because that takes place in a backstage area. Up next would have been Mindbender at Galaxyland. This Schwarzkopf loop read three of the most forceful inversions on the planet. All three loops were high in positive Gs and gray out moments for me. Then this coaster also had some devilishly twisted drops at the start, and a surprise airtime pop or two at the end. Then there was also a disorienting helix around a series of mirrors. Unfortunately, this ride was recently removed. Getting the next honorable mention is Chimera at La Feria de Chapel Tepec. This Schwarzkopf was similar to Mindbender, but even more intense. Part of that was Mexico City's altitude making me dizzy, but part of that was the lack of braking, so the loops had even crazier Gs, and the final few elements had some unintended airtime and lateral jolts from the increased speed. La Fria closed after a tragic accident in this ride, but this coaster was relocated to Indiana Beach, where it will reopen in 2024's All-American Triple Loop after a long refurbishment. Number 85, Storm Runner at Hershey Park. This intimate accelerator coaster is a diverse layout. The hydraulic launch is excellent, and it delivers a gut punch. Then the top has fantastic ejector airtime no matter where you're sitting. 
and that is followed by three inversions. The Cobra Loop has some nice positive Gs. Then the Flying Snake Dive combines Air Time, Hang Time, and Wild Laterals into one rapid sequence. And the ride halls start to finish while winding through Pioneer Frontier. Number 84, Superman Escape at Warner Brothers Movie World. This is another intimate accelerator coaster. The launch is not quite as good as Storm Runner's, but it's still great and powerful. But I prefer this ride's layout to Storm Runner. There are three giant airtime hills with very strong and sustained ejector airtime. Then the low turns of immense speed and strong forces. And as a bonus, this coaster starts off with a really cool dark ride section with some physical effects, such as an earthquake and a flood. Number 83. Boardwalk Bullet Akima Boardwalk. This gravity group wood coaster was impressively crammed into just one acre. It has a complex layout crossing over and under itself several times. The first half is incredible between the large drops and smaller hills, all of which offer nice airtime. The airtime is dialed back a bit in the second half, but the visuals winding through the wooden support structure help compensate. Number 82. Wonder Woman Flight of Courage at Six Flags Magic Mountain This is a near clone of Jersey Devil. The first half is equally as awesome, but the second half is markedly stronger. The final few hills offer ejector as opposed to floater, and then the additional curve into the brakes offers a fun lateral kink. Number 81 Gold Striker at California's Great America This has a case as the most intense GCI wood coaster. The speed is great anyway, but it's augmented by the tunnels and supports that you charge past. The transitions either offer positive Gs or laterals. Then there's plenty of airtime pops. They aren't quite as strong as the other top tier GCIs, but they're still solid. The ride does shuffle, but it's tolerable with the recent track work. Number 80. Wodon Timber Coaster at Europa Park This is another fast-paced GCI wood coaster. This one has a nice mix of airtime. Like Renegade, there are straight hills with sustained floater. Then there are some smaller hills and turnarounds giving sharper jolts as well. But this one has two advantages over the prior GCIs. One, this has an amazing first drop loaded with airtime. Second, this one has some cool theming in the queue line. Number 79, Mystic Timbers at King's Island. This is yet another GCI. This one has an agile layout through the woods. This amplifies the already great sense of speed. That's especially true at night when it's pitch black out there. The directional changes add variety to the usual out and back layout. Then every hill offers good air time. I know not everyone likes the shed at the end, but it's a quirky touch that brings a smile to my face. Number 78, Nemesis at Alton Towers. This B&M invert was recently retracted and rebranded as Nemesis Reborn, but this reflects the original version. This was an incredibly forceful and snappy invert. The downwards helix and inversions hit hard, and compared to the other B&M inverts, the layout was very unique. Due to Alton Towers' strict height ordinance, the ride was built in a pit, so you have a different flow of elements and several near misses as you charge through the terrain. The ride is short, but it delivers both visuals and forces. Number 77, Montu at Busch Gardens, Tampa. This B&M invert has size and power. The ride has seven inversions, most of which are heavy on the positive G's and whip. The best of the bunch is the Batwing. The flips are extremely snappy, and the sustained G's and the pullout are immense. Then this coaster also some great visuals as the low points pass through these Egyptian-themed trenches. Number 76, Osiris at Park Asterix. This is another Egyptian-themed B&M invert. Like Montu, it has some thematic touches, but I prefer the layout here because of how unique it is. The twisting first drop offers rare airtime and laterals for the genre. Then the layout alternates between forceful and floaty elements. My re-rides this past summer were still excellent, but not quite as good as my original rides in the spring. This ride runs steel wheels in the cooler months, meaning it'll go faster, so go then if you want to experience this ride at its peak. Number 75, Leviathan at Canada's Wonderland. 
The original B&M Giga Coaster has some standout elements. The first drop is one of the best in the world between its extreme size and abundance of airtime. The low speed hill blends airtime and laterals. Then the giant camelbacks offer copious amounts of strong floater airtime as well. The return run had me wanting a bit more though. A few elements were just okay, and the ride felt like it was missing an extra one or two airtime hills to complete the overall experience. Number 74, Junker at Powerland. This Gerslauer Infinity Coaster feels similar to Monster, except this one starts off with an ultra-powerful LSM launch. Then the layout offers stronger laterals and airtime. And there are three inversions chock full of hang time, including the super unique finish loop that wraps around a pedestrian bridge. And all of these forces are enhanced by the lap bar restraints that allow your body to be tossed about. Number 73, El Toro at Six Flags Grey Adventure. This Intamin prefabricated wood coaster has four of the best airtime moments in the world, if you love sustained ejector airtime. The first drop, two large camelbacks, and rolling thunderhill all offer extreme negative Gs. The rest of the ride is decent, not great. There are a few other spots of mild floater airtime, and the finale has some low S bends that are quick and snappy. The ride is smoother than most wood coasters, but there are some unpleasant jolts in a few valleys, particularly the far turnaround. Number 72, Colossus at Hyda Park. This Intamin prefab got a full retrack a few years ago, so it's running smooth as glass. The first drop and following two camelbacks feel like El Toro's first few elements, just a smidge less intense. The middle lets its foot off the gas though particularly in the giant pace-killing helix. But the finale returns to some fun floater airtime and a really cool thematic structure that emits fire. Number 71, Twisted Cyclone at Six Flags Over Georgia. This is the smallest RMC hybrid coaster. While it's a short coaster, it has amazing elements. The first drop in several smaller hills offer sharp ejector airtime. I especially love the sustained sideways airtime in that giant wave turn. Then there are also three sweet inversions, most notably the reverse cobra roll that's chock full of hang time. Number 70, Tatsu at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This is an awesome B&M flying coaster. This ride's built in a hill, and the terrain use is brilliant. You get awesome sight lines from the lift hill and turns. Then there are four wonderful inversions. Three of them are floaty and graceful. Then the pretzel loop is one of the wildest elements in the world. This type of element is intense anyway, but this is the largest of its kind. The positive G's are crushing and very sustained. Number 69, Terran at Fantasialand. This Intamin multi-launch coaster is a visual spectacle. The ride has some incredible theming as it winds past rocks and through the village of Klugheim and this also makes the layout unpredictable and near impossible to memorize. The start of each half is excellent between these punchy launches and these twisted hills offering strong airtime and laterals. The end of each half does fizzle out though, which keeps it out of my top 50. Number 68, Giant Dipper at Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. This classic wood coaster is nearly 100 years old, but it still beats out most modern rides. The turnarounds have some extremely strong laterals. They throw you sideways, and they'll pin you there for the duration of the turn. Then several drops in the back row of great flejector airtime, especially if you're on the smaller side because it operates with single position lap bars giving you some room. This ride is not fast, but the forces are no joke. Number 67, Ravine Flyer 2 at Waldemere. This gravity group wood coaster is an awesome location, the ride travels down a ravine and over a road. That alone makes it notable, but the elements are great as well. The first half is wild between the fantastic first drop, bunny hills with abundant airtime, quick directional changes, and sustained speed. The second half slows down a bit when you climb back up the ravine, but there are still a handful of airtime pops, and the ride is running better than ever with all the recent track work. Number 66. Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure at Islands of Adventure. This is arguably the best themed ride in this list. This is an Intamin multi-launch coaster that weaves its way through different structures, around nice landscaping, 
and past animatronics. This ride has some force too. All seven launches have nice kicks to them. Then the turns apply nice G's, especially if you're in the elevated motorbike seats. And there are some tricks that elevate the whole experience. This is a super long coaster that's engaging start to finish. Number 65, Mamba Worlds of Fun. This Morgan Hypercoaster shot up my ranks. The first half was always good with the large floater airtime filled hills and interesting turnaround sequence. But the park recently disabled the mid-course trim. So the return run that used to offer weak airtime now offers extremely strong airtime. And the lap bars in this ride are not super tight, so you'll feel all those negative G's in full. Number 64, Lightning Run at Kentucky Kingdom. The Prototype Chance Hyper GTX feels like an RMC. This ride is not the largest, nor does it have the same sense of speed as rides higher on this list, but it excels in the negative G department. There are some sustained hills during the first half, but most hills offer briefer bursts. The final few hills in particular are some of the sharpest ejector pops of any ride. Number 63, Wicked Cyclone at Six Flags New England. This RMC hybrid coaster is front loaded with strong airtime. The first drop, smaller bunny hills, and outer bank all launch you skywards. Then there are three excellent inversions. All of them are floaty, and they also offer fantastic head choppers. This coaster does slow down mightily on that last lap, but it still manages to find ways to buck you from your seat. Number 62, Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. This RMC Raptor is one of the wildest and fastest paced coasters out there. It looks cartoonish off-ride between the narrow track and speeds. The elements are amazing as well. The two largest drops offer some of the sharpest ejector airtime on the planet. Then the dive loop and S hill also offer intense negative G's while paired with wild laterals. The coaster is extremely short, which prevents it from placing higher. Number 61, Railblazer at California's Great America. This is a clone of Wonder Woman, just mirrored. I give this ride a slight edge though because it was running smoother in my recent rides, and the rock work on a few valleys enhances the already amazing sense of speed. Number 60, Steel Dragon 2000 at Nagashima Spa Land. This Morgan Giga coaster feels like Mamba, just scaled way up. The outward leg has some ginormous hills with oodles of floater airtime. The turnaround section is long and speedy. Then the return run is a never ending series of bunny hills with great floater airtime. The ride does have two cons though. One, a few valleys on the outward leg are shockingly bumpy. Two, you cannot pick your row and you really want to be on the ends to maximize the experience in the first half. Number 59, Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City. This is the original mock extreme spinning coaster and is such a fun ride. The spin allows you to take each element differently and they're particularly cool when you take the element sideways or backwards. Then the terrain results in a one of a kind layout that's uniquely sequenced. The inversions are excellent, particularly the dive loop and the zero G roll because they both lift you out of your seat. Then there are a handful of good airtime moments, most notably the incredible vertical drop out of the station. That is one of the best drops of any coaster in the back row. Number 58, Candymonium at Hershey Park. This B&M Hyper is better pacing than usual. The elements are taken faster and there's no mid-course brake run. The first half is some very strong and ultra-sustained floater airtime. The finale dials it back a bit, but there are still some nice airtime moments and a visually cool helix around the Kisses Fountain. Number 57, Goliath at La Ronde. This B&M Hyper is a floater airtime machine. The rise is a repetitive layout consisting of a never-ending series of camelbacks, and that's fine by me because they all have good and sustained floater airtime. Along with all those negative Gs, the ride also runs along the water and it offers some awesome views of Montreal. Number 56, Tuner to Zeus at Park Asterix. This CCI wood coaster underwent a major refurbishment from the Gravity Group. This included retracking, layout modifications, and new trains that feature a unique backwards row. The latter is the best experience by far. It feels completely out of control in reverse. 
The layout features some great airtime. Most hills toss you from your seat in some capacity, especially the largest drops in the back. The ride does shimmy on the turns, but it's plenty tolerable in the cushioned trains. Number 55, Leviathan at SeaWorld. This Gravity Group wood coaster also features a backwards row, and I give it the edge over Zeus because it was smoother when I rode it. The layout feels like Boardwalk Bullet as it constantly crosses over and under itself. Then it has a series of nice airtime moments. It's all floater airtime, but it's plentiful and hits harder when you cannot see it coming in that backwards row. Number 54, Joker at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. This RMC hybrid gets too much flack. The ride has some excellent airtime in the rear row. I especially love the twisting verse drop. The combination of strong ejector airtime and laterals is fantastic. Then this coaster features three wonderful inversions. I particularly love the sustained inverted airtime on the stall. There are a few turns that are just okay, but everything else is exactly what I want from an RMC. Number 53, I Speed at Mirabolandia. This is a greatest hits compilation from Intamin. The initial LSM launch has the Punch of Mavericks launch. The giant top has ejector airtime and laterals like the one on Accelerator. The Camelback has sustained ejector like the company's hypercoasters. The lateral snap into the far turnaround is reminiscent of the ones on Intimidator 305. And the S-Hill has an abrupt ejector pop like the final one on Ride of Steel. Then there are two barrel rolls, the first of which has airtime and whip like the Mosasaurus roll on Velocicoaster. The ride does fizzle out towards the end, and the restraints can cause some neck chopping, but the ride is otherwise excellent. Number 52, Maverick at Cedar Point. This Intamin dabbles in a bit of everything. The beyond vertical drop at the start has some intense airtime. The following low turns offer speed, laterals, and positive Gs. Then there are some additional ejector airtime moments, two decent corkscrews, and a punchy launch in the dark. Last but not least, this coaster's two super snappy Stengel dives that violently contort the train. If this coaster had better restraints, it could have placed even higher. Number 51, Pantheon at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. This Intamin multi-launch coaster is a dynamic experience. The launches are punchy, but I love what surrounds them more. The Zero-G Winder has some epic hang time. Then the main swing launch sequence includes a bunny hill with crazy ejector airtime, especially when you're going backwards. Then the spike offers sweet weightlessness. The second half is a mix of fun elements, including a powerful top hat, a large outward bank with sustained airtime, and a stall with inverted airtime and a wicked head chopper. I wish there was an extra element or two at the end because you have so much speed, but you have acceptable duration thanks to that swing launch sequence towards the beginning. Number 50, Mako at SeaWorld Orlando. This B&M hypercoaster is an exceptional first half when it runs untrimmed. Every single hill is strong and copious flagector airtime. It is absolutely heavenly with those clamshell restraints. The second half is not as airtime focused, but there are two swooping turns with some shocking laterals as you bank over the pathways in water. Number 49, Silver Star at Europa Park. This B&M hypercoaster is an equally strong first and second half. I do need to note that I've only experienced this coaster untrimmed, so I have experienced it in peak form. The first half is large hills with good floater airtime. The second half is even better. There are some borderline ejector pops, which is a rare and unique sensation on a B&M Hyper. Then there's a solid helix and some quick twists before the final break run. Number 48, Orion at Kings Island. This B&M Giga Coaster starts with a world-class drop. It offers so much airtime. The first few valleys offer blistering speed and good positive Gs. The first few hills are large in scale and only offer weak airtime, but it is unique that you're sideways. The return run has some additional airtime hills offering sweet flagector airtime, and there's also a decently forceful helix. Number 47, Formula Rosa Ferrari World. This is the world's fastest coaster. This intimate accelerator coaster kicks things off with a powerful hydraulic launch. It has a great initial yank, 
but it hits a second gear halfway down that is otherworldly. Then the ride offers a long layout, the ride never slows down, and every single hill offers nice floater airtime, which is extra sweet when paired with all that speed. Number 46, Lek Coaster Legendia. This Facoma creation is one of the world's best coasters for positive Gs. There are so many spots of high and sustained positive Gs, so I kept on graying out. But that's not all this coaster does. The ride has some good spots of ejector airtime, most notably that devilishly twisted first drop. And that's even with this coaster having restrictive vest restraints. Then the inversions later in the ride of Great Whip, including that visually stunning barrel roll through the station. Number 45, Cyclone at Luna Park. This classic wood coaster is a wild experience. A lot of that comes down to the trains. These have single position lap bars that allow plenty of room for airtime. The back has some wild ejector airtime in the largest drops. The front isn't too shabby either. And the seats have no dividers, so the laterals will chuck you across the train. I think the laterals are strongest in front as you're slammed into each turnaround. This coaster is a bit bumpy, but the trains are like couches so there's no pain at all. Number 44, Schwer Discarnate at Hansa Park. If only this ride were smooth. This Gerslauer Hypercoaster is such a fast and forceful layout, but my last rides on it were shaky and resulted in a headache. I love the elements. There are some wicked turns with intense laterals, and there are some powerful ejector airtime moments. My favorite of the bunch has to be that twisted first drop in the dark. This coaster also has some additional surprise elements indoors, and some wonderful theming before the main coaster bit. Number 43, Ghost Rider at Knott's Berry Farm. This CCI wood coaster was refurbished by GCI several years ago, and it has run like a dream ever since. This ride feels completely out of control. The first half is some larger hills with some sustained airtime. The second half kicks things off with an ejector airtime filled plunge. Then the ride zips through a dense wooden support structure. The remaining hills have sharp jolts of airtime, then the directional changes of strong laterals, most notably the final helix as you pin to the side of the train for 10 straight seconds. Number 42, Storm Chaser at Kentucky Kingdom. This RMC creation can be a tad temperamental, but my last rides in 2021 were excellent. Most hills delivered sharp ejector airtime. I loved the sustained negative Gs in the large camelback and the violence of the trick track double up. Then this coaster also throws in some fun inversions. The barrel roll down drop at the start is great hang time. Then the ZRG roll later in the rise fantastic whip and laterals. Number 41, Twisted Timbers at King's Dominion. This RMC hybrid is an ejector airtime machine. The trio of camelbacks offer strong and sustained ejector airtime, which is a treat for this type of ride. The remaining hills offer the briefer bursts of ejector airtime that RMC is known for. Then this coaster also throws in some fun inversions, as both the barrel roll down drop and zero G roll have excellent hang time. This ride does not feel overly fast though, which puts it behind the next few RMCs in this list. Number 40, Wildcats Revenge at Hershey Park. This RMC creation is the pacing of their larger hypers. This coaster charges from one element to the next. There aren't too many traditional bunny hills, yet this coaster is no shortage of ejector airtime, as there are multiple off-axis and sideways hills that'll pop you out of your seat. Then this coaster has some surprise laterals, particularly in the double down, and there are four inversions offering great hang timer laterals. Number 39, Medusa Steel Coaster at Six Flags Mexico. I finally experienced this coaster properly in 2023 with steel wheels and a six car train, and it shot up my ranks. Despite being one of the smallest RMC hybrids, it has phenomenal pacing. This ride hauls. There aren't too many basic bunny hills, but the turnarounds blend strong laterals and or ejector airtime pops. Then there's a great off axis hill in the woods. Then the three inversions are fantastic, particularly the first and last ones that offer exceptional hang time. Number 38, Wildfire Colmartin Zoo. This RMC topper track wood coaster is one of the best starts of any coaster. 
The super steep first drop offers strong and sustained ejector airtime. The large stall has lots of inverted airtime. Then the twist and shout violently ejects you while sideways. This rise a visually stunning location on a hill, but this does cause the coaster to lose some steam in the second half as you climb back up it. Most hills still offer decent pops of airtime at least, and the two zero G rolls have great hang time. Number 37, Superman Al Ultimo Escape at Six Flags Mexico. Morgan's final hyper coaster is their best ground up creation. This ride is such a strange coaster in a good way. The pre lift section has some airtime pops as you wind down a hill. The main layout has plenty of hills with very sustained floater airtime. But the helix is the star. This section blends great positive G's, crushing laterals, and surprising ejector pops into one dazzling sequence. I cannot believe how this element tossed me about the train. Number 36 Flying Dinosaur at Universal Studios Japan. This may be BM's most intense coaster. The start is insane. There's a steep first drop with odd air time since you're in the flying position. Then you have two of the most forceful elements back to back. You have this inversion that rotates you 540 degrees, so you end up on your back. You get G's like a pretzel loop. And immediately afterwards, you go into the actual pretzel loop, which is as intense as you'd expect. The second half is visually cool flying over pathways and waterways. Then there are still some decently forceful turns and two slow inversions offering hang time. Number 35. Millennium Force at Cedar Point. This Intamin Giga Coaster is all about speed. The experience is magical in the front row. The ride never slows down, so it's blissful feeling all that wind in your face. This coaster also has some great elements as well. The first drop is epic between the view and airtime. The initial overbank has super sustained positive G's, and it is a hard gray out for me. Then the few straight hills offer nice floater airtime. Number 34, Intimidator 305 at King's Dominion. This Intamin Giga Coaster starts with an impressive drop like Millennium Force, but this ride is far wilder. It has the directional changes of a ride like Maverick, which is crazy given this ride's speed. The initial turn is a guaranteed gray out, and possibly a blackout for some. Then the following transitions are extremely abrupt and rowdy, offering wild laterals and airtime pops simultaneously. The coasters higher on this list do better in the airtime department, but I cannot deny this coaster's raw intensity. Number 33. Goliath at Six Flags Over Georgia. This B&M hyper coaster is a powerhouse. These rides always have sustained airtime, but several hills cross into the ejector range in Goliath. Then the helix turnaround is a major gray out moment for me from all the sustained G's. I also like how this coaster travels outside the park's boundaries, running past roadways and waterways. A few valleys in the first half will shake the train, but it's not enough to ruin everything this coaster does well. Number 32, Tutatis at Park Asterix. This Intamin multi-launch coaster feels similar to Pantheon with a more action-packed second half. That second half hugs the ground while throwing in all sorts of elements. There are two wild inversions and a wide variety of airtime hills, some straightforward and some sideways. Then the first half is very similar with an exciting swing launch sequence. This one just has more theming. The launches are punchy, the bunny hill mid-launch offers wild ejector airtime, and the spike is great hang time. I just wish there wasn't a trim on the top hat. That's the one buzz kill on this ride. Number 31. X2 at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Arrow's final coaster was revolutionary. The seats in this 4D coaster can flip throughout the layout. When you add in hyper heights and super forceful elements, this ride is insane. The inversions are incredible. The near vertical first drop performs a flip at the very last second. The raven turn offers a blend of positive and negative G's. Then the camelbacks have some scary air time while also flipping you. The final raven turn is a powerful burst of positive G's, but it is very shaky, as are some other valleys in this ride. Try to ride on an inside seat if possible. Number 30. Ejinaika Fujiku Highland. 
This is SNS's follow-up to X2. This amplifies everything X2 does, both good and bad. It is taller, faster, and flips more. The ride also fixed the pacing on the far turnaround, transforming it from a relative dud of an element to a genuinely exciting moment. But this ride was even bouncier than X2 when I rode it. Number 29, Phoenix at Knobles. This classic PTC wood coaster is special because of the restraints, or lack thereof. There are just buzz bars and no seat belts, so any airtime moment will lift you a foot into the air. The first half is solid, but the ride really picks things up in the second half. The last six hills of epic ejector pops. It is downright frightening getting that caliber of airtime with restraints this minimal, but I love it. It looks cartoonish seeing people launched airborne off-ride, but the ride really is that powerful. Number 28, Hyperion at Energylandia. This large Intamin Hyper starts as an out-and-back coaster, but the second half is elements of a twister. There is so much variety here. The first half has some powerful and sustained airtime, particularly in the first drop and the subsequent camelback. The directional changes offer nice laterals and or good positive Gs. And the small hills towards the end offer brief but punchy airtime pops. There is a bit of a lull in the middle of the layout, but the ride starts and ends very strong. Number 27, Taiga at Linen Maki. This Intamin multi-launch coaster is a neat location on a hill. The terrain use is brilliant, and the high points offer beautiful views of Helsinki. The layout is excellent as well, between the elements and pacing. The ride is two solid launches, and several nice airtime moments. Those negative Gs are not quite as strong as the Intamin multi-launches higher on this list, but they're still quite good. The standouts for me are the inversions. The 0G winder at the very start, the supersized stall in the middle, and the barrel roll at the very end offer fantastic hang time. Number 26, Shambhala Port Aventura. This is the best B&M hypercoaster. It is taller than most, so the ride is a series of long drops loaded with strong floater air time. The drops even last long enough to give a rare tummy tickling sensation for me. The pullouts and turnarounds offer nice positive G's as well. Then this is better pacing than usual by minimizing trims and putting the mid-course brake run towards the very end of the layout. And the ride offers stunning views of the mountains and water as you navigate the layout. Number 25, Expedition G-Force at Holiday Park. This Intamin Mega Coaster is some of the best sustained ejector airtime of any coaster. The Camelbacks and Bunny Hills are glorious. Then the first drop is epic, as it also offers powerful ejector airtime, but the twist also induces wild laterals. The middle section lets its foot off the gas slightly with a series of okay turns and overbanks, but the ride's nicely wooded setting helps compensate. Number 24, Fury 325 at Carowinds. This B&M Giga Coaster is a more complete layout than the other Gigas earlier in this list. The first drop is equally as amazing as that of Orion. Then the first half hugs the ground. This showcases the ride's speed and the transitions of crazy laterals. Then the second half is sustained flagector airtime on many hills. There are one or two elements on the return run that are just okay such as the Helix, but most of this coaster is truly elite. Number 23. Coaster at Peony Playland. When I rode this coaster, it felt like a wilder version of Phoenix. The ride had even more minimalistic restraints and zero seatbelts. This resulted in some of the scariest airtime of any coaster. Then there were no seat dividers, so the minimally banked directional changes were tossing me side to side. However, this ride has since received retractable seatbelts that have negatively impacted the experience. So unfortunately, I suspect this coaster will move down the next time I ride it. Number 22, Fly of Fantasia Land. This innovative Vacoma flying coaster is a visual marvel. This coaster winds its way through the land of Rookburg. Then the layout is exciting as well. It is nearly impossible to memorize the layout. Then the elements are strong too. The launch is of nice zip to them. The ride is a half dozen unique airtime moments. The inversions are graceful and floaty. 
then the valleys and turns offer crushing positive Gs. This is particularly true in the back rows. Number 21, DC Rivals Hypercoaster at Warner Brothers Movie World. This mock hypercoaster is a long and diverse ride. This placement is specifically for the backwards row. This ride is very strong ejector airtime at the start and end. Getting this type of airtime in reverse is glorious. I particularly love the twisting first drop and unique non-inverting loop, because they offer both powerful airtime and lateral simultaneously. The middle section is all sorts of directional changes offering a mix of airtime pops, lateral kinks, and positive Gs. This part does have a bit of a pacing issue in most rows, but the disorientation factor of the backwards row counteracts this. Number 20. Twisted Colossus at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This RMC hybrid coaster is a rare quasi-mobius layout, meaning you experience both sides. This gives the coaster great length. Now unfortunately, duels in this coaster are fairly uncommon. The visuals are epic when you get one though. Fortunately, the elements are very strong on their own. Most hills offer strong ejector airtime. Then the two inversions are spectacular. The stall has inverted airtime. Then the zero G roll has vicious laterals. Number 19, Superman the Ride at Six Flags New England. This intimate hypercoaster is set up like Hyperion. The first half has an outward leg with super sustained ejector airtime. The fourth hill in particular is one of the single best hills of any coaster. Then the second half is a twister combining good positive G's, quick airtime pops, and near misses as you wind around the area. The retrofitted U-brick restraints are a major detriment for many, but they personally do not bother me or inhibit the forces. Number 18, Boulder Dash at Lake Compounds. This CCI wood coaster is special because of the location. It charges along a heavily wooded mountainside. Night rides are particularly epic because there's very little light back there. Then this ride is a great layout anyway. It is an out and back coaster with plenty of hills, most of which offer good floater airtime. But there are subtle directional changes mixing in nice laterals as well. And this ride was running faster and smoother than usual in 2023 with the addition of some steel Titan track at the start. Number 17, Sky Rush at Hershey Park. This intimate hypercoaster is one of the most intense rides out there. This ride is some of the strongest ejector airtime of any coaster. It is particularly evident in the first drop that has a bizarre springboard effect halfway down. The valleys of heavy positive Gs, then the twisted hills offer some of the most violent laterals of any coaster. It feels like you'll be snapped out of the train, and I think the restraints augment these sensations. This coaster doesn't have as many elements as the rides higher on this list, which is why it doesn't place any higher. Number 16, Iron Rattler at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. This RMC hybrid coaster has an amazing location on a quarry. The largest drops take full advantage of this. The first drop in particular is my favorite drop of any coaster, between the size, powerful ejector airtime, and the lateral kink. The ride also has some other strong airtime moments, and a wonderfully floaty zero-g roll. The ride does lose a lot of speed atop the quarry wall, but the elements up there still hit for me because they toss you from your seat. In this ride is the far superior Gerslauer trains that amplify the already great forces. Number 15, Helix at Lisa Berry. This mock multi-launch coaster is exceptional. This ride is a long layout that winds its way around a heavily wooded hill. But you're not just dodging trees, you're also avoiding other rides and pathways, and the high points offer stunning views of Gothenburg skyline. The visuals in this ride are among the best of any coaster. It also has amazing elements. There are seven great inversions, most of which get you out of your seat in some capacity. Then there are plenty of airtime hills, particularly the giant camelbacks. These are some of the best elements of any coaster. The launches are admittedly weak, but everything else is near perfection. Number 14, Zadra at Energylandia. This is a rare ground-up RMC hybrid coaster, and it is one of the fastest-paced coasters in the world. The speed and progression of elements is astounding. The first half is amazing. I love the colossal first drop, the giant turnaround, the super-sized stall, and the twist and shout. 
all have super sustained airtime. The middle bit is good, not great. Then the finale ends with a bang as there's this feisty S-hill and a rapid barrel roll into the final break run. Number 13, Shivering Timbers at Michigan's Adventure. This CCI wood coaster is an airtime machine. You'd be hard pressed to name anything with more floater airtime. This is a long out and back coaster with one airtime hill after another. They all hit in terms of strength and duration. It seems like you spend more time out of your seat than you spend in it. Then for variety, the far turnaround and final helix offer strong laterals to complement all those negative G's. Number 12, Ride to Happiness of Plopsaland to Pan. This is the best of the mock extreme spinners. This ride is chaos. The vehicles spin faster than the others, and there are several powerful airtime moments, particularly that broken up top hat in the final few hills. They are magical when taken in reverse. Then the inversions are excellent as well. The hang time and the JoJo roll out of the station, and especially the double dive loop are exceptional. The latter is ultra disorienting. There are a few elements in the first half that are good, not great, but this ride's best moments are as good as any coaster. Number 11, Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood. This is a special hyper coaster. Morgan took an old Arrow multi looper and transformed it into a fast and forceful hyper coaster. This ride uses the terrain to perfection, as the second drop is gigantic and dives down a ravine. Then there's an overbank with crushing positive G's. The second half is some of the strongest ejector airtime out there. It is powerful on its own, but it's extra sweet with the roomy restraints. This ride is a bit short for a hyper coaster, which just keeps it out of the top 10. Number 10. Velocicoaster at Islands of Adventure. This Intamin multi launch coaster is an amazing ride in all aspects. The ride tells a cohesive story, and there's nice theming in the Q line first half as the train winds its way through a raptor paddock. There are some great near misses. Then the elements are strong too. The launches are punchy. There are some good airtime moments, most notably the top hat. And the four inversions are world class. They all lift you from your seat. The Mosasaurus roll is particularly memorable as you're laterally ejected mere feet above the water. Number 9. Batman Gotham City Escape at Parque Warner Madrid. This is yet another Intamin multi launch coaster with many similarities to Velocicoaster. This ride also has great theming in the queue line and the pre launch sequence. Then the Leo is similarly as dynamic. The ride has some impressive ejector airtime particularly on the top hat and the subsequent camelback. The four inversions are amazing as well, with the stall having breathtaking hang time. It may be the best inversion in the world. I give this ride the edge over Velocicoaster because there are less filler elements, so the pacing is even tighter. Number 8. Conda at Wallaby, Belgium. This Intamin Mega Coaster feels like the marriage of their old hypers and an RMC hybrid coaster. This ride starts off with a twisting first drop, similarly as great as the one in Expedition G-Force. Then there are some large camelbacks with extreme and sustained ejector airtime. The return run feels like something from an RMC, as there's a rapid fire series of bunny humps. Just where you'd see an inversion, you have a larger bunny hill giving sustained ejector instead. Number 7. Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City. This RMC wood coaster has lightning quick pacing. This ride drops down a hill, and most elements hug the ground. The speed is further augmented by all the trees you whiz past. This setting also results in epic night rides. The only time you slow down is on the double barrel roll at the end when you climb back up the hill. But it's advantageous to slow down here for increased hang time. Then there's plenty of air time. The first drop is among the best in the world. Then there are several smaller hills with sharp ejector airtime, including some that are sideways. The ride does have two slight cons though. One, it can be bumpy in wheel seats. Two, it is on the shorter side. Number 6. Untamed at Wallaby Holland. This RMC hybrid coaster is an ejector airtime buffet. The first half has some larger hills with sustained airtime. The others offer more rapid bursts of airtime. 
Then this ride also mixes in the most inversions of any RMC with five. They all offer wonderful hang time, particularly the double barrel roll at the start. Now I do need to add the caveat that I've only ridden this coaster on days when it poured, so it may have been running abnormally fast from the slick track. Number 5. Iron Gwazi at Busch Gardens, Tampa. This is a monstrous RMC hybrid coaster. It has phenomenal speed and pacing. There is a lot of strong ejector airtime, most notably in the slightly beyond vertical first drop. The giant outer bank that follows, the wave turn underneath the lift hill, and the final few drops. I also love the death roll. It is super disorienting and loaded with intense laterals. And this coaster also has better positive G's than most RMCs. Number 4. Airy Force 1 at Fun Spot Atlanta. This is yet another RMC hybrid. This one feels like Untamed, but even wilder. There is some truly special airtime, such as the Outer Bank and the Quad Down. The latter is one of the most aggressive airtime sequences of any coaster. Then there are four fantastic inversions. The stall has you hanging for several seconds. Then the two barrel rolls later in the ride are taken at breakneck speeds, and they offer insane laterals. Every element on this coaster hits, and I love its frenetic nature. Number 3. Voyage at Holiday World This Gravity Group wood coaster is absurdly long, and it feels like three rides in one. The outward leg is these giant camelbacks loaded with airtime. The turnaround section mixes bunny hills and quick turns. Then the return leg weaves back and forth, while also throwing in plenty of bunny hills. This ride holds its speed incredibly well for its length, and nearly every hill offers airtime. It feels like an endurance test in the best way possible, and night rides in this coaster are legendary. Number 2. Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point RMC's original Hyper Hybrid is the best coaster in the world for ejector airtime. Nearly every hill offers that type of airtime, and it is strong too. The first few elements have sustained airtime, with the giant outward bank standing out most. The second half alone is better than many coasters in this list, with the sheer quantity of bunny hills. Then this ride also mixes in four inversions, and I love their placement in between all those negative Gs. And coming in at number one is Lightning Rod at Dollywood. This RMC creation is spectacular. The second you crest the near vertical drop, this ride does not slow down. The ride follows up with some large hills offering sustained sideways airtime. Then the rest of the coaster offers briefer, but ultra powerful bursts of airtime. That is particularly true in the quad down. There is a reason the sequence is so highly regarded by everyone. There is not a single dead spot on this coaster, and it also features a marvelous location on a wooded mountain. This is great by day, but even better at night when you cannot see a thing. When I last rode this coaster, it still had its launch, and since it was an uphill launch, it had good positive Gs. Now this was recently switched out with a chain lift for reliability purposes. I am intrigued to get back on this ride in the future, and see if it's still my favorite coaster. So those are my top 100 roller coasters as of the end of the 2023 season. What is your favorite coaster? Let me know down in the comments. Likewise, let me know if you have any comments on the rides I've mentioned, or any I may have failed to mention. If you enjoyed this countdown, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing, because there will be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.